Today is Shabbat or Pentecost as we know it, May 31st, 2020. Let me begin by saying Baruch Haba, my friends. Welcome in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, what is Pentecost? Anybody tell me what Pentecost means? Well, Shabbat in Hebrew means 50. Pentecost is the Greek word for 50. And that is 50 days after the last Sabbath of Passover. So it's 50 days from then. Um, some folks might think Pentecost is a lively, rocking church, like some of our friends are. Uh, and, and there are churches more lively than we are. Not, not some of us, but anyway. But that really is not Pentecost. Others might say it was the Holy Spirit, his fire descending on the apostles. And that is true that the fire did fall and fill the apostles. Uh, and uh, that was accompanied with a very strong wind, as did God when he thundered down from the mount, the summit of Mount Sinai, uh, giving the five books of Torah to Moses, and that also was on a Pentecost Sunday. So I don't know if you got that or not. So then what is it really? What is this thing that we celebrate? When the Lord Jesus Christ walked this earth, it was the second most important festival of Israel. There were three pilgrim festivals, and this was one of the most important. And again, it took place 50 days after the Sabbath following Passover, which was, and that was probably number one, the most important, and number two is Pentecost. It was given by God to people so that they could remember when the Torah, or the first five books of the Bible, were given from Mount Sinai. It's also the day of the first fruits offering, and a traditional time for the reading of the book of Ruth. Most of your uh, Jewish uh, brothers and sisters will read the book of Ruth during today, by the way. So allow me to break this down just a little bit more. And it's important to note that Pentecost, or Shavuot, celebrates the giving of the Torah to Moses from God, but not the receiving of it by the people. No one has fully received the Bible as of yet. Now you may have trouble believing that, but try reading God's Word on a regular basis and try to find something that you have never read before. I'll tell you, I assure you this is the living Word of God and each time that you read it you're going to find something new. Amen. Now the Bible itself doesn't change, and it certainly doesn't contradict itself. It is so complete and so perfect that it will apply to every simple human being every single day in every possible situation or circumstance. It offers guidance, light, insight, solutions, promises, and examples, and godly nuggets of perfect truth on every single page of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. After 82 plus years, I've received some of it, but I realized that my life could not be long enough, nor my brain large enough to receive all of it this side of heaven. So I get excited every time I get to read it because <laughs> I'm gonna find something new. And what about the offerings of first fruits? And this is the first fruits of the harvest. And what about reading the book of Ruth? And I assure you that that would be a couple more sermons, so I'm not going to go into that today. But I want to skim the surface, as it were. Ruth left everyone and everything to follow the God of Israel. She loved her mother-in-law. But that's hard for me to believe that that was the only reason that she journeyed with Naomi back to Judah. 
She had lived very closely with Naomi, and she had experienced through her the abundant life, hope, faith, and the purpose that the one true God gives. And she chose following him over everything else. Your God will be my God, she told Naomi. And then Boaz. Boaz took this pagan woman as his wife, and she was woven into the lineage of Jesus Christ. And just like Ruth, we have to be willing to give God the first and the best of us as well. And let me reemphasize that. We must gladly and joyfully give God the first and the best of us. He will not accept grumpy or half-hearted anything. So we say, oh, I'll give him Sundays gladly, right? That's good. Sunday's the first day of the week. That's great. But what about the other six days, right? What about the rest of your talents that he has given you? And each one of you have talents given to you by God. Do we really honor our Father with our labors and our efforts? Is it possible for him to receive glory because of our attitudes and our willingness to serve? Do we give him the first and the best of our time? I'm sure we all send, spend time speaking to God, but the truth be known, it's probably leftover time. You know, a minute between the commercials on the television, two minutes when we're really in trouble, five seconds when we give him thanks. Do we set his time aside for our Heavenly Father, creator of the universe, because he is worthy and we love him? I mean, that's what we should be doing. And what about the M word? M-O-N-E-Y. Mm -hmm. Some of your faces just got very stern. <laughs> Do we put God before all of our toys, our clothes, our gadgets, our entertainment, our investments, our addictions? Do we honestly believe that we can give God 100% of our best, including the stuff from our pocketbooks and our wallets? Money determines where we live, what we eat, how we dress, how we play, where we go, where we drive, how many toys we have. Our money determines everything material in this earthly realm in our lives. Now, all of that being said, Shavuot, the Jewish Pentecost, is relevant to us Christians because it celebrates the Bible, gives us a chance to offer God our first and our best. After all, he offered his first and his best that he gave Yahushua, Jesus, his beloved son to us. Now you might be thinking at this point, well, what about the apostles and the fire and the wind? What's that all about? Isn't God great? Jesus promised his disciples that the Holy Spirit would come and they would be filled with power. The very day that the apostles were to be giving their first fruits to God. He gave them that power. He birthed the Christian church. And he took those frightened, illiterate fishermen, sneaky tax collectors, cowardly families and friends, and filled them to the brim with fortitude, assurance, boldness, to enable them to move forward and speak, and that one day bring 3,000 souls to believing in Jesus the Messiah. So on Pentecost, the feast day, the first fruits offering day, and we know that there were at least 120 people together waiting in that upper room, and they were praying, and they were full of fear and worry, I'm sure. Who knows what else? 
The important thing was that they were together, not just physically, but spiritually. No matter how bad it got, whatever the consequences, they knew that what they knew, and they were sticking with the people that knew it as well. After all, they had seen Jesus rise and alive. They had talked with him. They had eaten with him. They watched him rise into the clouds. They knew what they knew. But they were also aware that there wasn't probably anyone who would believe them. They knew that the Pharisees, the Romans, the Sadducees, and the priests wouldn't want to hear anything they had to say. They also knew that an angry mob had screamed to crucify their Messiah, and that same mob would probably want to crucify them as well. But still, they stayed together. They didn't run. They prayed together. They waited together because they knew what they knew. And they were ignited by the holy fire of God. So let me ask you, do you know what you know? Are you sure? Is there any doubt in your mind? Are you willing to stick together and pray and wait and see what God will do? We are still His church. Amen. The same one that was birthed some 2,000 years ago. God never changes. His power is still the same. The Holy Spirit still enables us to move with assurance and boldness. He replaces our noodle-like spines with courage and faith if we will allow him to do so. So, beloved, today, Sunday, is Pentecost, and we have been given the gift of God's holy living word. We have the opportunity to give him our first and the best of our entire lives. And, beloved, when we do that, we will have demonstrated what the apostles showed us many, many years ago. Together we are determined to wait and to pray and anxiously watch for what the Holy Spirit will do in us for the glory of the Father and His Son, Yahushua Jesus. Bow your hearts at me, please. Come, Holy Spirit. You're our light and our fire. Shine among the shadows within each of our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, the source of our shalom, our peace. Deepen in us the action of the peacemakers, the words of the preachers. Heal the divisions that ravage our earth. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And that's the Spirit's message to us this day. Love one another, pray for, and forgive one another always, and do it. Yes, All right, amen. Worship team.